What's up, Pickle Peeps? Today is a quick one, and it's kind of a PSA, a public safety reminder for crafter businesses. And that is, if you're not doing shows, you are missing a mega opportunity. Now, hold on for a second. If you're like, Melissa, I only do online events. I get it. I totally get it. You don't want to be schlepping your stuff to events and setting up tables and dealing with either tons of people or no people and getting help and what's the of food? Can someone give me a bathroom break? All that stuff. I get it. Leaving the house at 3 a.m. I get it. We do events that are up to like three hours away and we will drive there, do the event and then drive home at night. I get it. However, I want you know that if you make that decision that you're going to be online only, you are losing out potentially on a mega opportunity. How do I know? Because it happened to me today. So no, I was not at an event today. However, um, I spoke to a coordinator for the New Jersey State Fair. Now, how did this person fry me? How did, did I cold pitch him? Nope. I was at another event, a rodeo, with my stuff out there. And to be honest, the rodeo kind of sucked for me this year. It was an awesome event as far as like watching the show and like eating the food and that stuff. But sales wise, kind of really sucked in comparison to last year. So I was mega, mega bummed about this event. And then a couple of days later, boom, I get a call, I get an email from someone at the New Jersey State Fair inviting me to be a vendor. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but like when you're pitching shows and stuff, you can either be chasing them or it's a much nicer position for them to be chasing you. Now you kind of have a little bit you're not on the begging spectrum for the event anymore. You have a little bit more options, a little bit more play, a little bit more command in the conversation. A little bit, a little bit. But it's really, really cool. So the biggest thing when you're miss that you're missing out on at events is exposure. And I know, I know exposure is like a dirty word in the crafting and handmade industry. Because everyone wants you to give stuff to them. And, oh, it'll be great exposure for you. And like, I've definitely done those craft shows where it's like, yeah, um, we don't have, a, I don't know how many people or I can't pay you a lot, but uh, it'd be great exposure. And that's bullshit. But there's a different kind of exposure because you know who else goes to craft shows and events? People who run events. People who source vendors for events. The lazy ones are looking online. I'm straight up. The lazy ones are looking online. The ones who are really vetting who's coming into their event, the, one, the events that are private invitation, those people are going to shows. So how are you going to get those contracts? By going to shows. It has happened to me, this is uh, the second or third time now this year that I've had a really sucky event, but made a phenomenal connection that's getting me into a much better event. So it's a little easier to swallow having a crappy sales day or a crappy weather day or any of that when you are now have on your calendar something else that is awesome. So I want you to think about craft shows and think about secondary benefits, just like we did our giveaway series recently. I don't know if you saw that, where it's like, yeah, the primary thing for giveaways is email addresses, but there's a whole bunch of secondary benefits to running a giveaway that are not just email addresses. Like when you go to a, crowd, a show, sales are the number one thing you want, but there's a whole bunch of secondary benefits for doing craft shows. You could be growing your email list. Maybe they're not ready to buy with you that day, but if you put an email list sign up form on your table or I run a giveaway, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I run a giveaway. Um, if you guys want, I'll show you, walk you guys through my whole process for doing giveaways at events. Um, but you can do that to gather email addresses. You are, like I said before, you're going to get in front of other people who have other connections. You might have store owners who, if you do wholesale, they might be interested in your stuff. And the biggest thing when you do a craft show or you do any kind of in-person live event, not live like on social media, no, an in-person, in real life, face-to-face, -face, they call it belly-to-belly -belly selling. It's the old term for it is belly-to-belly. -belly. <laughs> like, it's a little weird, but okay. I like for face-to-face -face instead of belly-to-belly, -belly, but whatever. Um, those kinds of events, you get to witness other people interact with your products. Never mind the pride. Like, I feel it every single time I set up a booth and I go and I walk around and I do like a silly video and I'm like, I'm looking at everything. It's like, wow, I made all that stuff. Damn. When did I have time for that? I don't know if you guys feel that way. I feel that way just about every time I do a booth set up. 
but then you get to see other people's faces and you get to see what draws their eye, what attracts them, what pieces are people picking up, which ones are they looking at, and then which ones are they buying, because those might be two different things. And all this information, if you pay attention and study what the people are doing when they come to your booth, gives you information to be better online. And you get to talk to people and you find out what do they like, what do they don't like, in a way that you just don't get that online, that kind of byplay to figure out how to improve your products. Maybe you're one size off, maybe you're one color off, maybe you are uh, just a small tweak from having an amazing best selling product and you wouldn't know. You really wouldn't know because we don't get that kind of feedback online. You get that feedback from being in person at events. So if you want to know more about events, let me know. I'm planning to do a whole series eventually on uh, running events or being at events and what kind of to watch out for so you have a better chance at having a better event and all that good stuff. But that's not tonight. That's another day. Um, so I will see you then. If you enjoy this kind of content, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Any kind of questions you have about doing an event, drop them below so I can get that series going for you. Till then, bye Beaster or bye Pickle Peeps. <laughs> Wrong grouping. That's my... Harder-based people are the beasties you got. Other pickle peeps.